welcome back to Streaming Media West 2019. I'm Tim Siglin, contributing editor with Streaming Media Magazine and the founding executive director of the not-for-profit Help Me Stream. Today I've got with me Steve Heffernan with Mux. And Steve, you were saying just before this that you're one of the founders. So how long Correct. has the company been around? Uh, yeah, we've been around for about four years now. We started beginning of 2016. Okay, and what's your, what was your initial role and what's your role now? Uh, initial role and continues to be um, head of product. Okay. So essentially I'm helping to kind of figure out exactly, you know, exactly what we're building, uh, a lot of times how we define the metrics that we track or what okay. the APIs look like. That. And for those who don't know, what is MUX? I mean, uh, MUX yeah. is, is a term that we use in the industry <laughs> as something, but <laughs> MUX, the company, obviously, is different. Yeah, totally. So, uh, yeah, we're a, a tech startup uh, focusing on video. Okay. Uh, our first product that we created in 2016 is uh, video performance metrics. So mm -hmm. track things like playback failures and rebuffering. Sure. And, um, yeah, we uh, you know we helped CBS stream the Super Bowl last year and um, uh, continuing to build out kind of that mechanism and, and how we track uh, how well video is streaming. Okay. And then our second product we came out with about a year and a half ago, which is a video API. And uh, there's a lot going on in the scenes. Behind behind the scenes, it's uh, video host hosting, transcoding, and streaming. Okay. But you send us a video through the API or a live stream, mm -hmm. we give you back an HLS manifest that will play in any player. Okay. Okay. And so that allows us to take a lot of the, like, all the data that we have and make better decisions about how to stream video for And, and are you, when you say send the video and then you send them back something that can be played on any device, are you hosting that video to be played or are you? We are. Okay, so it's a service as well from that standpoint. It is, yep. And we, uh, we tend to work with, um, you know, mid-stage startups or early media companies who, you know, don't have the, the, the full engineering team that mm -hmm. can, they can put into video. They right. want, like, a team of experts that has a nice system that can just kind of do it for them. Okay, so, got it. Yeah. Um, Andy Beach and I used to joke in the early years, Andy worked, you know, has worked in a number of companies in the industry, <clears throat> that we all needed, like, an AI version of an Andy Beach who <laughs> could make those decisions and ultimately yes. it sounds like yeah. I'm assuming you're employing some level of machine learning as well as the analytics we as are, well. yeah. Yep, yep, some machine learning to kind of both help out on the um, uh, you know, per title encoding mm -hmm. side of things right, sure. and then also on the um, deciding based on the audience's network, like mm -hmm. what are the right renditions for that right. for that audience. Okay, so. that makes sense. Yeah. So so with the early product where you're doing the measurements of player performance, is is that being done with like real time user measurement tools that are on hundreds of thousands of devices, or is that being done within the player itself? Uh, it is in the player taking those real-time okay. user measurements. So okay, we have SDKs it. for all the players that you can think of, and then they're sending beacons to our centralized service whenever you know an error happens, or even just like play, pause, all mm -hmm. those things. We're kind of creating the whole story through events. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just this is sort of a side question, mm -hmm. but you mentioned you know the HLS model, <clears throat> and of course H.264 is there, but now there's even some HEVC. What do you all see from an adoption standpoint with HEVC versus H.264? To me, it, there was hype a couple of years ago, but it seems like the, the legs that H.264 has has been pretty long and it seems to be continuing. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, we still see primarily H.264 content, at least going through our system and what our users, even our data product users are, are are using to encode the video. HEVC is certainly uh, coming into play with 4K. Like you almost sure. can't do 4K sure, sure. without HEVC. Right. And then also um, user-generated content, like things coming off of an iPhone just as you take a photo yourself or right. a video yourself. Um, <clears throat> We're seeing a lot more of HEVC from just iPhones using that. Yeah, HEIC so. for the for the still formats and as you said, HEVC for the video formats. Right, exactly. It, it, that's on the contribution side, but on the distribution side, short of 4K. Um, yeah, it's really from what we see. There's always a base of H.264, and okay. then you choose to step up HVC if you think your audience will get a benefit from it. But it's you know it's still kind of few and far between. Like I think there's definitely a future there, but mm -hmm. not a, a, a little crazy longer idea. than than we all anticipated. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. So you've been in, at it for four years now. What what's most surprised you in the changes in those four years? I mean, you started one direction and you have you know these additional products that you put out what mm -hmm. what sort of is surprised you in the streaming space Ooh, um, 
well, the thing that comes immediately to mind, because uh, I just gave a talk on it, was uh, just the concept of low latency live streaming mm -hmm. and like both kind of what that means for the industry is like pushing the edge of how we get you know the bytes of video from one place right. to another as quickly right, right. as possible but then it also just kind of like changes the whole experience of what video is mm. you know as a player engineer like you know I'm used to just building buttons that look like your your VCR from 10 years ago right, sure. but now like you know with this interactivity like it kind of blurs the line on what a player is and Got kind it. of expands like what we can do with that and I think that's that's yeah, pretty interesting that's the valid point so it, it the interactivity piece coming into play. And, and what's interesting, having been in it for 22 years now, there are cycles where interactivity raises its head and then goes, I mean, Flash was a great example yeah. of that. Yeah. And then the whole model of HTML5 nine, eight, <laughs> nine years ago, and then finally Canvas and some of the things you yeah. know, that have come along as part of that, so. Yeah. All right, good. Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, I don't think so. It's been a great conference. Great, yeah. awesome. Yeah. And we'll be right back with our next interview.